If you had no other choice but to use deadly force against the two dumbest criminals in Chicago because your awful family abandoned you during the holidays, what would you do? It's us or them, and there's no calling for backup. After all, can't have the cops poking around with our entire family vacationing in Paris. They might start asking all kinds of difficult questions, questions we can't afford to answer. No, we're gonna have to take care of these morons ourselves, quietly. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to really beat the wet bandits in Home Alone. Kevin McAllister's had enough this Christmas. He's tired of being ignored by his criminally negligent parents, tired of constantly being insulted by his dysgenic older siblings, and tired of bunking with young people pants when all the other beds are taken. But most of all, he's tired of getting screwed out of that sweet, sweet cheese pizza. This time, Buzz has crossed the line. He knows good and goddamn well Kevin hates having a bunch of extraneous bullshit on his pie. You can't just pretend to puke up a man's dinner and not expect to throw hands about it. Oh, but guess who catches the blame for the resulting Ruby Goldberg shit show? Look I what you to. did, you little jerk! Look what you did, asshole. You're tearing into a child over a little spilled milk? This is isn't a life or death emergency. It's a brawny commercial. Everyone, calm down. We don't need 15 cooks in the kitchen to clean up a simple spill. Sure, lock up the eight-year-old because his troglodyte older brother is too much of a wuss to hold back a 60-pound child. Meanwhile, there's a punk-ass pizza boy and a gold-toothed criminal in cop cosplay milling around unsupervised in your living room. Yeah, where the fuck's your warrant, Kojak? So we're just checking the neighborhood to see if everyone's taking the proper precautions. Right, this is Chirac we're living in. Do you you really expect us to believe the local PD has enough spare manpower to waste this kind of time in every house, in every neighborhood? We'd be lucky to get a note on our door reminding us to lock it, much less some pigs stinking up our hallway. Better rattle off our entire travel itinerary in front of this guy. I'm sure he's totally not a wolf in sheep's clothing. If I were in Tommy DeVito's shoes, I'd just rob the place blind while everyone's running around with their collective heads up their asses. Probably wouldn't even need the cop uniform. Just come in wearing a prison jumpsuit and start stuffing silverware into a burlap sack. Good thing the woman we count on for love and protection is totally clocking this reprobate and not hyper-focused on harshly disciplining us for standing up for ourselves. Everyone in this family hates me. Then maybe you should ask Santa for a new family. It's a great idea. Question is, what to do with the old one? Eventually, everyone has their breaking point, and Kevin's no different. Something's gotta give this holiday season, and with the whole family set to leave for France in the next morning, it's time to put his expertly crafted plans into action. The sun rises on the McAllister home, and all is quiet. Gone are the throngs of screaming bedwetters, bratty teenagers, and terrible role models. Looks like Kevin's now the man of the house. What a surprise, or is it? I made my family disappear. I made my family disappear. boy, Kev. Let's face it, they were holding you back. In all likelihood, you were mixed up at birth at the hospital. And now your real family, the Sheltons from Law Abiding Citizen, are stuck raising a dim-witted little sh Link. Time to celebrate with a little junk food and trash TV before we loot the place and begin working our way through the neighborhood, just like the kindly old serial killer next door. Back in 58, murdered his whole family with a snow shovel. Unfortunately, Hull is not well in sleepy suburbia. My cousin Vinny's been hard at work casing the entire block, and now he knows exactly which five families will be gone for the holidays. Apparently, a lot of stupid people live here, and like the saying goes, a fool and his money are easily parted. And that's the one, Marvin. That's the silver tuna. You talking about our house? Yeah, it's not gonna end well for you. This is our turf, and we're far too young to understand abstractions like mercy and forgiveness. Wait, you idiots are going in now? You realize there's a lot more than five families on this block, don't you? If someone sees a windowless plumbing van parked outside their neighbor's house in the middle of the night, they are for sure going to call the cops. Especially when your dumb asses come sneaking around holding up crowbars. You should take advantage of your choice and getaway vehicle and come by during the day when someone might expect to see a plumber working. Also, it couldn't hurt to get some matching hats or jumpsuits with the company logo. Ray, go around back down the basement, come on. Nothing to see here, folks. Official plumber business. 
You guys look like the realistic burglar targets they sell at shooting ranges. You might as well at least cover your faces since anyone that looks at you is for sure going to know that you're up to no good. This would be another good use case for Harry's phony cop uniform. After all, he's already introduced himself to the entire neighborhood that way, and he did say he'd be keeping tabs on the place over the holiday. Fortunately for the wet bandits, Nerd McAllister is too sugar crashed to throw down tonight. He decides to let them off easy by flipping the basement lights on while they're trying to break in. The scare tactic works for now, but the sick ones always come back, and when they do, we'll be ready. The next day, Kevin raids the late Buzz's room for petty cash. It's hardly enough for a Scorpion Evo, but it'll at least get us through a trip to the hardware store. We'll want to get the basics, like tempered glass that we can shatter, and framing nails that we can drive upwards through planks of wood. Power tools will probably be out of our price range, so we'll have to go with whatever our folks had lying around the house. We're going to need as many instruments of pain and flammable liquids as we can get our hands on, for whenever those dirtbags decide to show up. Speaking of which, those two clowns are currently right across the street earning their nickname. Always leaving the water running. We know each and every house that you've hit. You couldn't just leave a red carnation on their pillow or something. You had to go ahead and cause tens of thousands of dollars in property damage that you're going to be charged with. Not to mention the fact that their neighbors will know something's up when they see gallons of water pouring out from under the front door. Hmm, everywhere that plumbing van parks mysteriously floods. I guess they just must really suck at their jobs. These guys are just dying to get caught, aren't they? I mean, look at this sh yeah, just go ahead and touch everything you can with ungloved hands. Maybe rub your fingers in olive oil first. We want to make sure that we get linked to as many crimes as possible to maximize our prison sentences. Hey, I know. Let's add vehicular manslaughter to the mix while we're at it. Just drive off without paying any attention to what's in front of you. You gotta watch out for traffic, son. Danny don't visit the funeral homes, little buddy. He doesn't visit shallow graves either. Probably shouldn't get into a f***ing staring contest with the local kids after you've just just finished ripping off their neighbors. Naturally, Kevin recognizes this asshole as the cop from the other night, and quickly puts two and two together. Realizing they've been made, the wet bandits start creeping along behind him to see which house he goes to. You know, because a windowless van following close behind a small child is totally the look you want to go for, while keeping a low profile. Fortunately, Kevin's not your typical innocent child. He leads his pursuers on a wild goose chase, before ultimately losing them in a local nativity scene. Little do they know, they'll be the ones meeting Jesus here in a bit. Good on Jigsaw Jr. for being smart enough to not lead these bastards straight back to his lair. Now, we know exactly who to look out for and what they'll be driving. Next time we see that van parked nearby, we should go out and slash the tires or stuff a rag in the gas tank and light it up, preferably while they're still inside. Not sure we'll have the wherewithal or materials to disconnect their brakes, but smashing out their taillights could potentially land them behind bars if the cops start asking questions dumb and dumber can't handle. Of course, where's the fun in that? That night, Kevin rigs up a little shadow show for his new friends. The ruse works, but damn, dude, are you just gonna spend all night hopping up and down on one foot? Also, why the fuck do your folks have so many mannequins? The normal amount of mannequins for a human family to own is zero. Anything more than that, and I gotta wonder if you're not making trench coats out of human skin. If I were the soggy bottom boys, I'd order a pizza to the house and wait to see who comes to the door. I mean, if no one answers, it's a pretty huge leap in logic to assume the entire display is being puppeted by a child. But if anyone really is home, I highly doubt that they'd send their eight-year-old boy to answer the door. Although, this is the McAllisters we're talking about here. What kind of mother am I? A garbage one, and that's why you got disappeared? Once again, Kevin was able to drive them away without violence. Evidently, the death gauntlet is still a work in progress. This exercise does give us some valuable insight into their intentions. They won't make a move unless they think the place is empty, which means we know just how to lure them in when the time is right. The next day, our criminal masterminds return to scope the place out once again. It looks deserted this time, prompting Marv to boldly go and find out. He tries the knob on the back door before blindly sticking his foot in through the dog door. Yeah, the thing about dog doors is that usually means they have a dog. Good luck getting your foot back when a bull mastiff locks its jaws around your tibia. If only we'd had a dog chain ready to slip around his ankle when he stuck his leg in. Then he'd belong to us. Of course, pulling a butcher knife from the block and working his hand over like an ice sculpture would probably take him out of the game for good. Instead, and yet another act of profound generosity, Kevin gives the thieving scum one last chance to reevaluate his life choices. 
is. Props to him for containing his bloodlust long enough to make sure everything's done correctly. That said, the scumbag violated the sanctity of her home with his disgusting foot. They're getting bolder, so we're gonna have to crank things up. Good thing Marv's not a movie buff. One, two, ten. <laughs> His timing is impeccable, the work of a true prodigy. Kevin's little fireworks display would probably scare most criminals off for good, but the wet bandits are nowhere nearly that intelligent. I mean, for all they know, someone just went full Miller's Crossing in there, and their first reaction is to wait right outside and see if someone comes out holding a machine gun. Shit, at least drive down the block in case he actually does come out shooting. Dumb as it is, their determination pays off. They catch Kevin coming out to saw down a Christmas tree and follow him back to the house to watch him through the window, because that doesn't look sketchy at all. Well, if the kid's there, the parents gotta be. He's home alone. Oh yeah, wanna bet your life on that? Just because there's a kid in there doesn't mean Ian McCollum isn't waiting around the corner to hem your ass up with a Mat 49. Nah, that was just firecrackers and a pot detonated in perfect concert with a gangster movie. Duh. Okay, well, do you really wanna meet the eight-year-old that could plan and execute something like that? Here's an idea. If you really think young Dexter is in there all by himself, why not call Child Protective Services and report it as a concerned citizen? Worst case scenario, he doesn't answer the door when they come to check. Best case scenario, they haul him off to rot in the nightmarish foster care system, and then you get to ransack his family home without a care in the world. Clearly, the wet bandits believe it's their lucky day. What they fail to realize is that this was all carefully orchestrated by Nerd McAllister to draw them in for the final confrontation. The only problem is we still have no way of knowing exactly when they'll strike. We'll come back about 9 o'clock. Oh, okay. I mean, Jesus Christ, we're looking for a challenge here. It's not nearly as fun when they clearly want to die. Also, why 9 o'clock? Do you have church in the morning? Just come back at 3.30 in the morning when he's sawing logs. <sighs> Well, now that these amateurs went and ruined the surprise, the only way we can make this sporting is to wait until the last possible minute to set up our defenses Rainbow Six Siege style. Otherwise, it'd be like shooting monkeys at the zoo. Extremely entertaining, but ultimately unsatisfying. Nine o'clock rolls around, and the wet bandits are right on time. They pull up directly across the street from the house because obviously there's no way he'll remember the van you stalked him in after nearly running his ass over. We'll go to the back door. Maybe he'll let us in, you never know. You've tried to break into his house three times, and just a few hours ago, he tricked you into thinking you were being shot at. What about that makes you think he wants to hang out? At least, don't knock on the door and menacingly announce your presence to the entire neighborhood. We know that you're in there, and that you're all alone. Was that not meant to sound creepy as f yeah, no way he's letting you in now. Not to mention the fact that anyone who heard that is either calling the cops or strapping up for some street justice. And even if they aren't, there's one thing you're forgetting. Now, you're all alone with him. If I were you morons, I'd try the doorknobs on multiple points of entry to see if any were left unlocked. And I'd sure as hell be keeping my mouth shut. We have no reason to think he's some kind of family annihilator that won't call the cops in fear of exposing his horrific deeds, so we can't let him know we're here until it's already too late. Fortunately, this is long before every kid had a cell phone, so all we'd have to do is cut the line to keep this a party of three. We should also see if we can shut the power off while we're at it. Although, that might just play into his hand. <laughs> After you recover from that, you should probably warn your dumb henchman about the sniper in the dog door before he sticks his fucking head through it. Then again, who would be stupid enough to actually do that? Jesus, dude, you're lucky that was a BB gun and not a Browning A5. Was there honestly no other way to look inside besides going neck deep in that bitch? Just pull back the flap and take a quick peek. I mean, for all you know, he had a circular saw set up over the top of it. The damage from Red Rider's raid is gonna be minimal. Joe Pesci will be back in action as soon as he stops fake cussing and fondling himself. As for Marv, a couple inches in either direction and he's running this off like number two. Actually, it'd probably put him out of commission for the rest of the night. Probably why dead I pulled a shot at the last second. Can't let him off that easy. Speaking of Kevin, I can totally understand your eagerness to get this bloodbath brewing. After all, you've been waiting so patiently to feast on their delicious suffering. But maiming these two goons outside your house could attract police attention if their agonized cries carry over to any of your neighbors. Not to mention the risk of civil suits associated with their injuries. Sure, it might be justifiable self-defense, but in today's day and age, you can always sue somebody. We need to draw them inside before 
before we punch their cards. That way, no one will hear their screams. No one will even know why the Wet Bandits just packed up and left. The Wet Bandits decide to split up, with Harry heading around to the main entrance, while Marv heads down to the basement. I know those stairs look super slippery, but I'm sure it's not. <laughs> Oh no, who could have seen that coming? Is this your first winter or something? Even if young Vladimir didn't soak those steps beforehand, you should just assume they're gonna be slick. It doesn't look like he's electrified the hand rolls yet, and you're already knee deep, so you might as well grab a hold and save yourself a bruised ass. Harry definitely caught the worst of it, though. He's lucky he didn't crack his fucking head open on the sidewalk. People die from that sh all the time. Looks like his back broke his fall. Come to think of it, they should just bag this up and contact a personal injury lawyer. Probably pull more out of this joint that way than you could in the back of a van. Oh, my back. I was just going door to door raising money for my puppy's heart surgery when I slipped on this recklessly unkept walkway. Now I'll never play piano again. Once again, Kevo, buddy, you gotta slow it down a bit. I get we can't exactly rule out the red carpet as they might become suspicious. Although, they are both dumb as hell. Either way, the objective here is to funnel them into a single secure area so we can torture the shit out of them for as long as we want. I'd leave the stairs going down to the basement purposefully deep iced with the door unlocked so they have no trouble getting inside. The rest of the doors we should nail shut to make them as difficult for them as possible to get in. Should do the same with any windows and board them up for good measure. As soon as we've got them right where we want them, we should climb out the second story onto a bedsheet rope and seal the door behind them with the strongest padlocks we can get our hands on, preferably chained to some eye bolts drilled into the stud. The basement door swings inwards, so that'll make it even harder for them to escape once the fun starts. Not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me! Classic fake white cord. Gets them every time. That was a lot of fun and all, but clearly not meant to take them out for good. Don't get me wrong, that iron's gonna hurt like hell, especially if it was full and plugged in, but it's not gonna crush his skull. For that, I might try freezing a five gallon bucket of water and putting that on the end of it. A couple dumbbells or a paint can might do the trick also. Of course, if your intention was to just soften them up, then maybe set a pot of boiling canola oil up there, Robocop style. That said, regardless of what was on the other end, this trap could be avoided entirely if Danny Ocean here was smart enough to bring a flashlight. I mean, what the hell kind of burglar are you? You're really going to make yourself completely reliant on your Mark's interior lighting? Back outside, Harry hasn't made much progress. He finally manages to skate his way to the front door, but he's too preoccupied trying to see through the clearly covered windows to notice the doorknob is red f***ing hot. No wonder it was so easy for Tutty Cicero to walk you into a room. You didn't feel it getting warmer as you were about to touch the knob? Also, gloves are a thing that exists. Although, at this point, I'd be less concerned about leaving fingerprints and more concerned with losing all the skin on the palm of my hand. By the way, your night's over. That hand is going to require urgent medical attention and probably a skin graft if the knob was really hot enough to glow like that. At the very least, you're pulling the rest of this caper with one arm behind your back. All right. Let's see how Marv's doing. Okay, you know you're gonna need your shoes at some point, right? Like, even if the rest of the house isn't filled with broken glass, just running barefoot through Chicago at night in the winter is gonna be bad for your health. What possible reason could you have for not stopping after losing shoe number one? It's not like you're gonna fly up those stairs anyways. This is yet another easily avoidable trap down in the basement, mostly because you should be able to see it coming a mile away. All that black shit smeared all over the steps? Yeah, it's not meant to help you on your journey. Also, Kiddo made absolutely no effort to conceal that framing nail, which would have been about head height when you started your ascent. Just poke around the basement for some old rugs or clothes or something you can use to cover the stairs and be sure to sidestep that tetanus dispenser halfway up. I mean, at least go back for your shoes before you give up completely. Marv's punishment for his extreme carelessness is a lovely puncture wound just behind the ball of his foot. Yeah, kind of an important part for walking. It's not enough to put him down, but he won't be going anywhere fast. Plus, he'll be leaking DNA all over the place, which would be great if we were trying to get the cops involved, but we're not. So it actually works against us by leaving more places we'll have to hose down with ammonia when this is all over. I mean, this whole contraption was just uninspired. The nerd McAllister I know would have placed broken glass and a few dozen nails on each of the steps, and then really gooped them up to make them harder to spot. We should have also used some pliers to slide
slightly bend the nail tips to widen the wound channel upon removal. Normally, I'd suggest dipping them all in human waste to cause infection, but they shouldn't be alive long enough for that to factor in anyway. Once we know he's immobilized, whether by being stuck or rolling around on the floor in pain, we should load up as much heavy shit on the toboggan as we possibly can and send it down the stairs after him. Hell, if we're strong enough, we could even try pushing the refrigerator over and let him have it. Oh, would you look at that? Looks like Harry's recovered from his disfiguring injury just in time to walk blindly into another trap. You'd think after finding the front door booby-trapped, you wouldn't just go charging through the first unlocked door you find. The kid's working pretty hard to keep you guys out, so if the door isn't locked, it's probably because he wants you to go through it. Should have just swung it open while standing safely outside. I mean, it could have been a hell of a lot worse than a hand torch waiting for you in there. Also, maybe it wasn't such a good idea to let your scalp cook under that torch for a solid four count. Seriously, Harry's lucky he wasn't a few inches taller. Otherwise, his face would look like an over-microwaved hot dog. And I hope that hat wasn't a polyblend, or whatever's left of it will have probably melted into his skin. This will serve as a permanent reminder of that time Harry got schooled by a third grader. But the goal here is to ice this fool, so the humiliation tactics are just wasting time. Besides, he's still halfway out the back door. If we injure him enough, he could escape before we have a chance to finish the job. We should take some steps to amplify the torch's effect, like rigging up a bucket of flammable liquid over the the door. Of course, we don't want to make too much of a mess, or the resulting conflagration will probably burn the entire house down. Instead, I'd maybe use some of that tar from the basement. We could even homebrew a little napalm. This way, the flames will hopefully stick around long enough to cover half his body in third degree burns. <laughs> Dude, go get your fucking shoes. What the hell is wrong with you? After everything you've been through, you're seriously gonna climb through a window without looking down? At this point, I'd expect a goddamn bear trap to be waiting to snip my leg off at the knee. You could have literally just stepped down in between the bulbs and been totally fine. Now Marv's sporting two fucked up feet, and he's gonna be a slow moving threat. Shouldn't be too hard to land some follow up shots to his eyeballs with a BB gun now. Clearly, the glass was never meant to be a showstopper. I mean, why waste that much time on a trap? that could be so easily avoided. Then again, we are talking about Marvin Harry, so it couldn't have hurt to glue down a few more of the bent framing nails. Either way, since we know they're both inside, we should turn out all the lights to make our upcoming traps harder for them to spot. Not being able to see won't affect any of these set and forget type traps that we've rigged up. And we can use broken glass or some other kind of noisemaker in kill zones that we need to trigger manually. <laughs> For real? You didn't learn anything from the last door you barged in through. He was literally egging you on this time. Lucky for you, he only had the one flamethrower to play with. The glue trap was hardly invisible, and you clearly were not looking down at the floor. I'm starting to think you guys are doing this shit on purpose, like some kind of sick, twisted self-flagellation by proxy. Leave Kevin out of your Hellraiser games, you f***ing sickos. He's just an innocent child who may or may not have wiped out his entire family over some pizza. This trap was more about inflicting mental wounds than physical ones. It's all about dominating your adversary's mind, getting under their skin. Of course, we could have gotten even further under their skin by hanging some of Dad's old fish hooks from the top of the door frame about eye level, especially with Harry charging in like he was leading the stack. We should have also replaced the feathers in front of the fan with a big bowl of cayenne pepper for that chef's kiss. With the appetizers out of the way, Kevin starts dishing out the entrees. The wet bandits finally regroup at the bottom of the staircase to begin their final assault, but it's all according to plan. Oh! Ah! Ow! Honestly, what the hell did you expect was gonna happen walking up an exposed staircase like that? I mean, I doubt you could have predicted you were about to eat a paint can, but he was almost certainly gonna dump something on you. You're just lucky it wasn't hydrochloric acid or a fucking nail bomb. Maybe, just maybe, peek that shit before you make a move, especially since there's a known threat literally asking you to come upstairs. Seriously though, they should be fucked up. Unless those cans were full of cotton, a blow like that could easily smash just about every bone in your face. It's gonna be a lot harder finding this kid with fractured eye orbitals. He'd be better off just lying still and accepting this sweet embrace of death. Shh, it'll all be over soon, Marv and Harry. Now, at this point, you might want to ask yourself whether anything in this house is really worth dying for, because if this last trap was any indication, the next one is going to involve anvils. Fortunately for you two losers, Kevin didn't anticipate 
anticipate your greater than average skull thickness, staving off the TBI. We should have emptied out those cans and hammered kitchen knives through the sides in multiple directions, then filled them back up with wet dirt to throw in a little extra stopping power. Also, there was no reason to stop after those two cans. I mean, you know they're just gonna get back up and try the exact same thing over and over again like the dumb ass fucking toads and cold skin. That hideous metal statue out front would have made for a great follow-up attack. With that, Kevin begins preparations for the coup de grace. He leaves the wet bandits a big spider to play with and pathfinders over to a nearby treehouse. Before long, his pursuers reach the attic and yes, they're actually gonna try and go after him. Even though you just fucking won. He left the house. Just yank the comforters off the beds, wrap up as much valuable shit as you can find and get out of there. I mean, was this always about revenge? Cause if that's the case, you could have just nailed the door shut and set the place on fire. Mission accomplished. But it seemed like such a great idea at the time. So, like, best case scenario, what did you have in mind there? Because even if you managed to make it all the way across, he could have just climbed down the treehouse, run back to the regular house, and then you'd be right back to square one. Except with third degree burns, stubbed feet, severe concussions, covered in chicken feathers. If you're that worried about traps, just retrace your steps and go out the same way you came in. And Kevin, you really screwed up on that one. You should have waited until they were almost there to cut the rope. That way, they'd hit the ground with maximum force instead of just bouncing them off the chimney. I mean, yeah, that's not gonna feel great, but nowhere near as bad as a crushed pelvis. After that, you're just a couple quick shovel decapitations away from victory. <sighs> I shouldn't be so hard on the kid. After all, this has all been leading up to the main event across the street. Kevin leads his vict- I mean attackers over to the Murphy's house they hit the day before. He heads down into the basement where the floodwaters slow his advance, giving the wet bandits time to head him off at the top of the stairs. What are you gonna do to him, Harry? I'll do exactly what he did to us. Huh, maybe it's a good thing he didn't take our advice on a few of those traps. It's not looking good for young Hannibal right now. They've got him right where they want him. But what they didn't count on is the South Bend Shovel Slayer coming out of retirement to add a few more kills to his name. Oh! 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 Real recognizes Real. It seems old man Marley has been watching Kevin's actions for some time now, and he sees potential in the young man's work. It needs a bit of refining, of course, but with a proper teacher, he could become a true artist one day, maybe even the best. There's still one thing left to address, however. Everyone knows it takes at least three smacks with a snow shovel to do the job. It's only a matter of time before those two imbeciles regain consciousness and come back for more, which is why Nerd McAllister saw fit to sabotage the gas main earlier in the day. After all, it's not even his house. Keep the change, you filthy animal. Things got pretty close there towards the end. But of course, Kevin only unleashed a fraction of his true power. When it's all said and done, I think the wet bandits in Home Alone were beaten. Moral of the story, don't eat all the cheese. For all you gamer subs nerds, they got all new waifu cups for September. The first of the four secret shakers is out now with fully realistic representations of women's bodies. Plus, use my code unbeaten to get 10% off anything. 